now delighted to introduce to this audience uh, Dr. Holly Humphrey, the new president of the Josiah Macy Jr. Foundation, the only national foundation devoted solely to medical education. Dr. Humphrey is a renowned medical educator and leader in our world and a great friend of the Gold Foundation and of humanistic care. Please welcome Holly to present our next award. Thank you, Richard. I too want to congratulate all of tonight's winners. Although I do not know Elaine Adler after that beautiful introduction and the chance that we all had to see her on film, I feel as if I know her. I do know Anna Quinlan. I know Anna Quinlan very well through her book, Living Out Loud, which I read not once but twice in the 1980s when I was a young medical student and doctor. And her column published on December 1st, 1988, entitled A Revoir, when she was signing off, saying goodbye to her readers in that New York Times column, was a column that I actually clipped and today sits in a folder in my filing cabinet, even though now it's actually available online. <laughs> so I've never met Anna Quinlan personally, but I know her well. But my purpose before you tonight is to introduce to you a truly extraordinary individual. The kind of individual, if we are lucky enough in life, we might have a chance to meet and to get to know. And I'd like to start with the following words. Life is no brief candle for me. It is a sort of splendid torch which I have got hold of for the moment and I want to make it burn as brightly as possible before handing it on to future generations. These words are penned by George Bernard Shaw and apply to Dr. George Thibault. Over the next few minutes, I wish to describe how Dr. Thibault took hold of that torch and passed it to future generations. In tonight's program, you find a brief summary of the achievements marking the pinnacle of Dr. Thibault's career, more achievements in medical and health professions education than any one individual has previously attained in a single lifetime. Dr. Thibault achieved many firsts as one of our, at one of our nation's storied institutions, the Harvard Medical School. After himself graduating from Harvard Medical School, he later became the first Daniel Fetterman Professor of Medicine and of Medical Education. He was the founder and the first director of the Harvard Medical School Academy established to focus on the education of physicians and scientists. His awards and honors are many, and while I highlight only a few, the list is long. He is an elected member of the Institute of Medicine of the National Academies, an honorary fellow of the American Academy of Nursing. He has received honorary degrees from four institutions. He has received the highest award from the Association of American Medical Colleges, the Abraham Flexner Award for Distinguished Service to Medical Education, and he has received the Lifetime Achievement Award from the National Medical Fellowships. Beyond these awards and honors, I want to focus specifically on the evidence that he has influenced and changed the world of healthcare. This evidence is most directly found in his various leadership roles. Most recently, as president of the Josiah Macy Jr. Foundation, his focus on interprofessional health care created a paradigm shift in health professions education. During his presidency of the Macy Foundation, he also created the Macy Faculty Scholars Program for mid-career faculty in schools of medicine and nursing. These are our nation's most outstanding future leaders 
who are innovating and implementing change in health professions education in schools all across the country. While president of the Macy Foundation, he used the bully pulpit with great success. One example is that lecture you've now heard about from both Richard Levin and the chair of your board, Richard Shear. You too can read that lecture because it is available online, as you've already heard, and published, soon to be published in academic medicine. It was the Jordan J. Cohen lecture sponsored by the Gold Foundation at the most recent AAMC meeting. And here is an excerpt of what George Thibault said, and I'm quoting. We must help make our society at large more humanistic. We will do this by the example of how we conduct ourselves as compassionate professionals in our individual patient encounters. And we will do this by continuing to reform our systems of care to make them more humanistic." End of quote. Prior to serving as the Macy Foundation's leader, Dr. Thibault held multiple leadership roles at Harvard-affiliated institutions, including Vice President of Clinical Affairs at Partners Healthcare, Chief Medical Officer at Brigham and Women's Hospital, Program Director of the Internal Medicine Residency Program for eight years, and Chief Medical Resident at Massachusetts General Hospital. This latter position likely has more direct influence on both patient care and the education of the newest group of medical school graduates than any other single position in an academic medical center. If we really want to understand how Dr. Thibault is passing that torch to future generations, I invite you to come back in time with me to 1974, the year when he was chief resident. I reached out to one of his former residents who had this to say about Dr. Thibault, his chief resident. And I'm quoting, I had the privilege of being one of the many new physicians who benefited from George's leadership and mentorship when he served as my chief resident at the Massachusetts General Hospital. In many ways, the residency experience is a test of humanism for all residents. George Thibault was a role model of humanism for every one of us. I am extraordinarily grateful to George for showing me and all the other residents how to practice medicine with compassion, respect, and commitment to the best care for each individual patient. He is highly deserving of the National Humanism Medal." End of quote. These are the words of Dr. Paul Ramsey, who for the past 22 years has served as CEO and the Executive Vice President for Medical Affairs and Dean at the University of Washington in Seattle. Let's hear from another one of Dr. Thibault's residents, Dr. Deborah Weinstein, Vice President for Graduate Medical Education at the Partners Healthcare System in Boston, who herself spent a year as Chief Resident. This is what Dr. Weinstein has to say, quote, I met George Thibault when he was the internal medicine residency director at MGH and I joined his flock as a brand new intern. I was a nervous medical school graduate and when I was in his presence, he cultivated a spirit of inquiry, teamwork and excellence while providing guidance to hundreds of residents over his eight years in that role. He combined the heart of a clinician, the wisdom of a teacher, and the savvy of a highly principled politician." End of quote. Okay, so how did this happen? Where did all this humanism come from? Well, according to psychologists and social psychologists, the seeds were likely planted long before Harvard Medical School long before Georgetown, where he graduated as the valedictorian of his undergraduate class, and long before his many leadership roles. He himself provides a clue to where it all began, and you will see it when you read the beautiful letter that he penned for tonight's program book. 
His humanism was born in part from watching his father practice medicine in a small village of 5,000 people in upstate New York, Chittenango. The name of this village originated with a Native American tribe, and th that name means where the waters run north. Where the waters run north. It was also in Chittenango where he met his wife, Barb, who is here with us tonight. And together, they have celebrated 53 years of marriage. Okay, so what is the impact of all of this achievement, all of this success? Well, let's do the math. George, during your roles as chief resident and program director, you easily mentored and were the role model for more than a thousand residents. As the chief medical officer, you were the leader for thousands of Harvard Medical School faculty and residents. As the founding director of the Harvard Medical School Academy, that would be thousands of Harvard Medical School students, residents, and faculty. And as president of the Josiah Macy Jr. Foundation, the entire country of health professionals. Okay, so now imagine all of those health professionals who saw George Thibault in action, who were taught and mentored by him, who saw him as a role model, and imagine all of those patients and their families who have been and are being cared for. That impact is profound. George, you have made the torch burn brightly and you have passed it to future generations, leaving an indelible mark on the professions, the professionals, and on patients and their families all across America. We are all forever in your debt. Thank you very much.